Today we're looking at a, an image by one of my uh, students. He took this at home after having uh, done something similar in class. Now ideally, with all of the black um, and dark tones in this, I would have uh, preferred if he'd shot it with an exposure compensation of minus one, possibly even minus two. Can't be any more specific than that because I wasn't there and we can't uh, figure it out. But yeah, a, a negative exposure compensation would have given us less highlights and a nicer um, black to be working with. But that's fine. We can we can figure all those things out. So basically, we're going to um, hopefully turn this into something that um, represents what the, the student wanted and uh, is a, an interesting image. So first things first, we'll just do a quick crop. And we can move that around there. And that, that looks pretty nice now. So we've cropped it. So now we want to take the blacks down. But if we just use the... Um, exposure slider it just darkens everything it just darkens everything if black slider yes it takes the blacks down but look what it does it adds so much extra contrast to the image that um that's no good either so in this instance we're going to move away from using global sliders and we're going to use the new um masking tools with this version of lightroom so up here is the new masking tools. We click on that and up comes our um, masking menu. And in this instance, we're going to select subject. Let's see how good it's able to pick this out. And <laughs> well, that looks perfect to me. Um, but obviously, we don't want to do anything to the actual subject. We want to do it to everything outside the subject. So we will invert. So a little box here, tick this to invert. And now we have everything selected apart from the lovely um, acorns. Uh, one of the nice new features I like as well with the masking is you can actually change your uh, color of whatever you want your overlay to be. So depending on what your subject is, you can choose something that's going to be so different to the subject you're not going to um, get fooled into picking something wrong up whereas if we make it something that looks like the subject itself you're going to have uh, accidentally picking up other stuff so let's let's go with a nice blue there and just click done on that so you can change that anytime you like and obviously turning on, on and off the show overlay will show the overlay um also what i like is when you have show overlay on it shows the overlay until you first touch any of your actual slider changes. So over here, as soon as we click on a slider, the mask overlay goes away and it starts showing you what you're going to do. So in this instance, we'll um, leave the exposure alone for a second. And as soon as I reset it, it gave us back our uh, overlay. So I'm gonna take down blacks as my first thing okay and that's pretty much sorted a lot of that out so now all we need to do is take down our exposure and as I'm not going for a very big um, uh, change on this I'll use the up and down arrow keys which moves in 0.10 of a unit so that you can see each time I press it you can see a distinct change in the exposure okay so about We've almost got rid of everything there. So maybe we'll take the um, highlights down as well because we've got a tiny little couple of places where there is a little bit of um, uh, highlight on an edge showing up. So if we just take that down. Now we'll take the whites down as well. And now looking in there, I've got a lovely, lovely solid black background. Okay, so if we just turn that on and off for you. Okay, we'll click uh, done on that. So now we want to do a little bit of um, 
because everything else has gone black, any of the global changes I do now will only really affect the subject matter. So in this instance, we want to sort of play with the um, the the overall tint and tone. Try and I, I want this to look a lot more autumnal, so it's going to be much much warmer. Okay. So and also we've got a couple of highlights in here because of not using um, a negative exposure compensation. So perhaps we'll take those highlights down first. So shift down arrow, and you should, I'm trying to do this slowly enough that each time I change it, you see a difference being made. And we'll take a little bit of the whites out. Now if we, if we go too far with this, we can always back it back off again. And again, I'm just doing shift down arrow, so you see it's moving in increments of 10, so that hopefully you can um, see the distinct changes that's making. So I'm, I'm I'm liking that a lot at the moment for the overall tonal balance. We are going to come back and um, do something at the end that's going to really help finish it off. But for now, that's given me a reasonable um, tonal balance. So now we want to... Um, let's have a look at um, our uh, clarity and texture. Let's just see what we need in there. So we'll go into texture and we'll go maybe 40 actually we'll go 50 and let's add a bit of clarity let's and uh, like all these things there are no perfect numbers there's just what's working for you visually so i just tend to eyeball these things and if i think we need a bit more i'll go back and add a bit more so let's just show you a before and after Oops, sorry, that's because I did um, it from a previous one. So, so actually, let's just show you. That's what we're planning to end up with. So let me go back. If if you've done this where you've um, created a virtual copy, I created the virtual copy over here. In So this is history settings over in the left-hand panel. So the first thing in the history is create virtual copy. And then I did reset settings. So if I... Um, control click which is um, right click on a PC you'll see that we get these three options create snapshot copy history step settings to before and clear history above this step so in this instance if we copy history step settings to before when I now use the before and after key it will show me so if I press the before and after key it shows me after I reset it so not how it came in so I've I've so now I can very easily show you the before and after. Okay. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, let's add a little bit of vibrance. I don't know if it's going to need any um, saturation. Let's see. Um, so we're getting we're getting quite green now. But as I said, I want to make this more autumnal so to make it more autumnal we just come up here to our temperature slider taking it to the blue makes things colder taking it to the yellow makes things warmer so let's see how far we need to go with this so again i'm using shift up arrow so you can see things changing instead of me just dragging the slider around so we Perhaps we'll hold that there and we'll have a little bit of a play with the tint, see what that gives us as well. So that's that's become quite nice and warm, but it's now looking just a little bit because when, when you when you add clarity, it tends to create additional um, contrast, so the bright areas have popped up again. So what we might do is just take a tiny bit of exposure out of it and I'm quite liking that so that's pretty much what I would do for the main edit there except that now it just looks like it's sitting as if I've cut this out and just plopped it on something so the last thing I would do for this 
is I would go back into my mask tools and I would create a new mask. This time I'm going to create a radial gradient. Okay, so just clicking anywhere and dragging out at an angle, just make myself a nice lozenge. And I've got a really, really big feather. Okay, so when I come out to the to the edge here you'll see my cursor can turn into a, a rotate symbol so I can now change the way this sits on it if I want to make my feather less I just go in here and drag out from that red point if I want to make it more I drag in so we'll, we'll give it a, a decent feather and if I want to make the whole thing bigger I can just grab any of these anchor points here so that's that's about what I want but I don't want to do anything to the actual subject. I want to do something around the subject. So again, we're just going to invert it. And can you see, nothing's going to happen in the middle. It's going to soften out here, and then out here the full effect will take place. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take down the exposure again. Bear, bearing in mind that the background is is as black as it can go so taking down the exposure is not going to um impact the black it's it's not going to get any blacker but what's going to happen if you watch the edges of the leaves can you see how they're sort of blending in slightly with the background they're still there but they're just blending in with the background and i think that just finishes it off really really nicely maybe we'll take her down this way a little bit let's have a look and let's turn that eyeball on and off so yeah all the details still there but we've just pushed it back a little and i just think that looks absolutely lovely um maybe it's not warm enough let's add a bit of saturation see what happens a little bit of saturation and maybe we need to add a bit more warmth to it and now we're getting quite uh, orangey so yeah so that's just a quick um, Lightroom edit of this lovely picture copyright uh, David Simmons and yeah have a practice let me know how you get on questions to the usual place enjoy